got the latest NFL news and rumors coming at you. You're watching NFL Daily by Chat Sports. That's Tom Downey. I'm Mitchell Renz. We're going to dive right into it around Amari Cooper leaving the Cowboys. Yeah, well, it does come from Mike Freeman, the softest man in sports media. Um, his argument is that NFL teams now think that Cooper is leaving. Side note, NFL teams can't think anything uh, because they're a team. They're not a person. He claims the Cowboys probably won't be able to keep both Dak and Amari. Too literal. Which they, they, they have the money to do so. J yes. just, just so we're clear on that, the Cowboys could easily pay Dak Prescott and Amari Cooper and more. They've got 77 plus million in cash space. They can get to over 80 with one cut, over 85 with one cut. It's not that difficult for them to actually do so, but don't let the narrative, you know, dissuade you there. Where things could get dicey, and I still think Amari Cooper stays. But there is at least a possibility, and I talked about this more on exactly, Mitch, on our Cowboys show today. Clock's ticking, guys. You, you got a week to use your franchise <laughs> tag. And we're not going to know if there's one tag or two tags until midnight March 12th. Now, in, there will be two tags up until that point, but you might have a six-ish hour window of only having one tag available or having two tags available before it changes. So if you're the Cowboys... Your clock is ticking, and if you only have one tag, if you don't get a deal done with Dak Prescott, you have to tag him because you can't let your quarterback hit the open market unless you're stupid, meaning Amari Cooper then hits the open market. Byron Jones, he's gone. He's not going to come back to the Cowboys. Sorry, guys. So the, there is at least the possibility of the Cowboys botching this in historic fashion where they, don't, they have not worked with enough urgency yet on these Dak and Amari Cooper contracts. They haven't done it. And even if you wanted to trade Amari Cooper and not bring him back, you trade him. Yep. So you have to use the franchise tag to do that and then do a tag and trade, kind of like Jarvis Landry did a few years ago. So, like, if you're the Cowboys, get going here, guys. Like, you have a week to get one of those guys signed, or you could have this all blow up in your face in embarrassingly spectacular fashion. Thank you for that. You didn't need to do it. Thank you. All right, how about this? We want you to predict this here. Where will Amari Cooper play? in 2020. So I want you to throw it in the comments section. So if you're watching this live on YouTube or on Facebook, get your comments in. Where will Amari Cooper play in 2020? How about this, Tom? A lot of Tom Brady, a lot of Bill Belichick issues. He shed. He, he shed. He said, she said. You he sh he <laughs> shedding over there? <laughs> I don't shave. You, you thinning your hair out already? So the Boston Herald comes out and, and they report that hey, Tom Brady and Bill Belichick had a phone call on Tuesday. Did not go well. Then Adam Schefter comes out and says, uh, the phone call wasn't on Tuesday. They did speak recently, though, and it was business as usual for the two. What I'm saying is, believe whatever you want. <laughs> Nobody knows anything right now about what Tom Brady is going See, to do. It is all speculation. The number of teams I heard thrown out there at the NFL Combine was almost half the league. Some of them were like, yeah, what about this? And we're like, See, I almost think like this whole person. like phone call thing was Tom Brady just talking to Bill Belichick. Has anybody ever heard Bill Belichick not sound like he's not happy? I think even when he's happy, right. he's just like, right. okay, maybe that's what you heard. I'm just saying. So we have put out some videos in the past. Thanks, Juice. <laughs> about Tom Brady destination odds. The Buccaneers at plus 1,500. Also a team not mentioned. We have a lot of fans here at that channel. The 49ers, yeah, also I'm plus not really buying San Francisco. I will make a note, though, on the Bucks before okay. we dive into what you uh, recently did a video on. I heard the Bucks a couple times. I, I think maybe they could be a legitimate sleeper candidate, but I think the Patriots are still the most likely. Now. So here are the most likely teams according to uh, BetDSI. Now, we made a video on some Tom Brady destinations. If you haven't seen it yet, subscribe to the channel. YouTube.com slash ChatSportsTV is below. We'll put it in the description. We'll put it in the comments. But subscribe. We have videos coming out all off season long around the biggest names in free agency. So one of the teams that I mentioned was the Chargers and Colin Coward. Hey, every single team in the NFL makes sense for Tom Brady. Yes, you can go back and look at Cowherd's videos. He's gone through. I think it's the the Cowboys, the Niners, Titans, uh, the Bucks might have been mentioned at one point. He's pretty much gone through all Houston the fits Oilers. and been like. Tom Brady's a great fit. The Chargers were his recent team, and he says the trade for Trey Turner, clear sign the Chargers are making a better offensive line for Tom Brady, which technically could be true, but also they need offensive line help. 
it's not like, wow, they went out and got somebody who Tom Brady loves and has worked with. No, it's that they needed offensive line help. Now, quarterback is a big need for L.A., and I did pick this tidbit up at the Combine, was that a couple weeks ago, the Chargers internally had discussions about Tom Brady. I don't know where that exactly went, but it at least has been brought up amongst other NFL teams, that's so it is, worth, it, is, it is worth monitoring. But I think that's true for most teams because they're going to at least explore it. Like, they're going to be like, hey, what about this? Let's discuss it. So that's not, like, earth-shattering, but I do think it's worth mentioning here. Uh, I totally agree with you, Tom. So how about this? Where will Tom Brady play in 2020? Now, I'm going to make this the pinned comment on today's video, so why don't you go on, scroll on down. If you're watching this on YouTube, you might get with an ad break, and let me know where you think that Tom Brady is going to play in 2020. Let's talk about Trent Williams, and this one actually recently just kind of came out here, Tom, and uh, is he getting traded? Look, I, I am very curious to see what ends up happening here with Trent Williams. Now, we, we've known the Trent Williams trade discussions have been around here for a while. This is not necessarily new information in terms of he wants out, but it had seemed at least briefly like Ron Rivera comes in, Maybe they're going to be able to, to, to make up a little bit, and then Williams will be able to play for the Redskins. Well, now he's been granted permission to seek out a trade. So I think the Browns, Mitchell, in particular, make a whole lot of sense here, given their previous interest. Are you surprised that he's actually has a chance to be traded? I actually thought the Redskins were going to keep him. I thought you know they started to fire a lot of their uh, medical team, and then maybe they were going to be able to keep Trent Williams. This one, I'll be honest, this one actually surprised me. I... It's tricky. He was not happy with that organization, but I thought that Williams was was going to be okay here, and that he was going to they were going to make amends. Clearly, not the case. I still think the Browns, in particular, make a ton of sense for them. They can they can still draft an offensive lineman in, in round one, by the way. And the Redskins did kind of botch this. They could have gotten more at the trade deadline or in the early even before that. Clearly, not the case. Maybe they can get a day two pick now, but he hasn't played in a year. That's going to lower his value, I think, at least a decent amount. So what round pick would you trade for Trent Williams? First, second, third? I want you to throw it in the comments section below. We'll give some shout-outs here to some of the people that are getting some votes in. Tom, while they're coming in, where do you think, or what do you, what would you offer for I Trent Williams? I would consider a second, but I'd want to be able to get with one and be like, gross, hey, you know, yeah, you know, what are you thinking about in terms of your long-term contract? Because if he wants a new deal, that's going to lower it down for me. If he's willing to play, and then we'll figure it out later. Okay, maybe that changes. So I would consider a second round pick, especially if I if I consider myself a contender. But I think a third might end up being a pretty decent price point as well. So keep dropping those in the comment section because uh, I got a price drop for y'all. Chatsports.com slash jersey deal. Jerseys under $80. You can see them on screen now. Just $79.99 price drops. We're trying to give you the best deals on the internet. Support your teams. Normally, these are closer to 100. They are available, though, for $79.99 at chatsports.com slash jersey deal. Oh, by the way, just as a little reminder here, that free shipping deal. Ooh, so you're in really good shape there if you're able to pull that one off. So I, I, I we so jerseys with free shipping yeah. under eighty dollars. Chatsports.com slash. A lot of these, deal. by the way, first off, they're available for like every single NFL team. A lot of them are different color fonts and schemes. So I really like the creativity involved there. Shout out to uh, chatsports.com slash jersey deal. Okay, new CBA rules, Tom. 17 regular season games. So obviously this yeah, is an increase from 16 yeah. to 17. A, a lot of this we kind of already knew. The, the, the playoff change, for example, the training camp practices, the, the larger rosters, and I think most importantly, as we await the players voting in, they, they have a week to decide if they want to approve the CBA. The minimum salary increase is going to be a key thing here for the NFL and for the NFLPA. There are a lot of minimum salary players, a lot more of those guys than the ones who are making $25 million a year. So the, the rank and file, if you will, that's going to incentivize them to approve if maybe the big players won't end up doing that. Then uh, we also got some franchise tags remain. Yeah, this was a, a non-starter for the NFL owners. They were going to ensure that franchise tags were staying. The fifth-year option is also going to stay. It's going to be fully guaranteed, not just fully guaranteed for injury, and it's going to be based on performance, not where that player was drafted. The NFL is also working in what we're going to call their version of the NBA's MLE. That's the mid-level exception. It basically allows a player to, or a team to re-sign one of the players that they have on their roster if they've had at least four years of service time. So vet, veteran players 
and have them count less against their cap. So you, okay. you could save up up to 1.25 million on each player. So if a player, you know, signs a, a, a one-year six million dollar deal, they can shave off 1.25 million of that on the cap. Player still gets paid. More flexibility for the NFL teams. Tougher holdout rules as well, by the way. Increased fines that can no longer be wiped away if a player does return. And for veterans, those with five-plus years of experience, if they hold out a single day of camp, they do not get an accrued season. That's a big deal for NFL players, so ownership won that one. And then this one's no surprise. I'm sure you've heard it. There's going to be no substance abuse suspension. I was wondering suspensions. why Josh Gordon was trending on Twitter today. You're you're not going to be suspended for weed. Now, you still could get fined for it, and there is like a really convoluted path if they do get suspensions, but it's basically not cooperating with the NFL and not okay. taking the drug test because that's going to violate basically you You can still get suspended for, you know, stuff like, uh, like performance-enhancing drugs. And if you're Greg Robinson and you get caught, you know, bringing up a bunch of drugs across the border, you're also going to be suspended for that. That's stuff you can't do, but tests, that's not going to result in suspension. So there are some also uh, key NFL offseason dates that we want you to just keep in mind. So March 12th, it is at 4 p.m. Eastern time. That's the deadline to use the franchise tag. What do you want to weigh in? Well, just then hours after that is the deadline for new players to vote on that new CBA. As of right now, the NFL and NFLPA are not going to push that franchise tag window back leads to some uncertainty. And then potentially four days later, we're going to start tampering with NFL free agents. And then March 18th, free agency begins. So all of a sudden, we've got ourselves a tight little timeline here and things about to ramp up quickly for the NFL. So will the new NFL CBA pass? Why for yes and for no? And with all those things coming up, just another reason why you should subscribe to Chat Sports because oh, yeah. we're going to be taking you through everything that you need to know around it all. So why for yes and for no? I'm going to say why for you. I think it does pass. I don't think it's going to be a very massive margin by which it does, but I think the NFL is going to be able to get enough of those lesser name players to apply and say yes, that it will end up passing. Well, Tom, I'll say this. If it does pass, I think this guy would probably drop it. Uh, Alshon Jeffrey, is he going to get traded from the Philadelphia uh, Eagles? You kind of forced that one, but I, I'm, I'm going to respect it. was Nelson um, Aguilar. It would have been way been better. It would have been way better. I know. I know. Uh, NFL.com threw out Jeffrey as a potential trade candidate for the Philadelphia Eagles. The issue here is his contract status makes him very tough to move to the extent that the speculation from there is that they might have to attach something better. There, there was one report I saw of Alshon Jeffrey and Andre Dillard going somewhere. But it's a horrible idea. You don't do that. And, of course, just so we're clear, by the way, the Eagles are going to let Jason Peters walk, so I'm not really sure why they would choose to be like, yeah, we're just going to go ahead and, and not uh, not bring back. I mean, Alshon Jeffrey, our, our though, this trade really star, wouldn't surprise you know, me all that much. He was not all, he's, hasn't really worked well with Carson Wentz. His, he was much, much better with Nick Foles. And the entire offense in general, I don't really see him playing – a major role. So there's, for what they have to pay him. There's been a lot of, I, I'd say, informed and, and reasoned speculation that Jeffrey has been the source of some some leaked reports out to the media and that he might even be the cause of friction in there, which is really bad if you're an NFL team. You don't want that in your locker room. Now, maybe the Jets could make sense as a potential option because they've yeah. got some cap space. And uh, Joe Douglas is there, and he's got ties to the Philadelphia Eagles. But they can't just cut him. And that that's the super awkward spot here for Philadelphia is that they guaranteed his base salary last offseason. So he's getting that money if they cut him. So they can't move on from him. So if they were to release him, his dead money's too high. They can't get rid of him. And maybe next year they can revisit that. But a trade makes it possible. But coming off the, the Les Frank injury, he might not be able to play in week one. Alshon Jeffrey's value is pretty much at an all-time low right now. And that, that's unfortunate for Philadelphia. I'll tell you one thing. I wouldn't trade Bet DSI for the world, not even if they offered me Alshon Jeffrey. So you guys want to get started with Bet DSI. If you want to bet on XFL games, if you want to bet on who's going to win the Super Bowl and MVP, you can do all that right now at Bet DSI. They're the Internet's number one sports book, chatsports.com slash bet. But use the promo code NFL120 to get 120% deposit bonus. I didn't see this, so I'm glad that I talked about the XFL yeah. betting odds on them. Over-unders at 37. That's just... It's going down. It started at like the 47. The offenses are bad. I don't know what to tell you guys. Now it's down to 37. The, the offenses are bad in the XFL because the quarterback play is bad. You hate to see I it, actually like, love I to actually, watch it. I actually like New, New York to cover the spread in this one. Because I've seen Philip Nelson play, and if Landry Jones can't go again, 
I'm not going to bet on Philip Nelson. Not uh, that New York has great quarterback play, but Philip, check down King Nelson. Give me New York plus sure, eight me, on that one. Give me the Guardians. Give me the Guardians. All right, let's talk about uh, the NFL again, shall we? Let's talk about Derrick Henry. King Henry led the NFL last year in rushing yards. This is intriguing if, they tr if they're going to tag. Yeah, your good friend Matthew Berry was told by Titans Insider that he expects the team to franchise tag Derrick Henry and thus allowing Ryan Tannehill to hit the open market, which, look, we, we mentioned the lack of potentially two franchise tags impacts the Cowboys. Same deal here with Tennessee. We've also got Jack Conklin that they got to figure out. Clock's ticking here, too. Yeah. I, I know that Tannehill had a resurgence. But it's still kind of Ryan Tannehill. It's still Ryan Tannehill. I like the tag for him, but then you could risk losing Derrick Henry. So same deal there for Tennessee. Clock's ticking. they got to make some decisions here, and quickly. I know deadlines make deals, but... It's a little bit dicey right now. Man. It's, it's, right, so. it's, it's, it's at least worrisome. All right, how about this? You guys are going to play GM here, right? Okay, gonna, I love to do it. Here we go. Pick one to tag. You're going to tag Ryan Tannehill, type T, or you're going to tag Derrick Henry. I want you to type H. We'll give some shout-outs. What do you think, Tom? I, I am going to go with T relative to their positions. Derrick Henry is a better player than Ryan Tannehill. Agreed? Easily. Like, like yes. he, is, he is a better back yes. than Tannehill is quarterback. But I also got to think of, okay, worst case scenario, how do I replace them? Yep. Can have, a, I think, a lot easier time replacing a running back because those guys are easier to replace than it would be for Ryan Tannehill. Although maybe you signed someone in free agency and now you feel great about tagging Derrick Henry instead. So I will say this. I put out a video of the top destinations for Derrick Henry, so go check that video out as well. But pick one to tag, T for Tannehill or H for Henry. Let's talk about another running back here on NFL Daily. We got Melvin Gordon. And uh, tell me the latest around Gordon. Well, Justina Anderson reports he's expected to test free agency. That was that was literally a breaking news push from ESPN, which is, okay, weird. That's really not breaking news. But we did want to make note of it because, duh, he's going to test free agency. You thought he was going to be back in L.A.? I didn't think that was going to end up being the case. Never thought that was the case. Like, and he's, the issue for Gordon is who's going to throw money his way? He might not have even been the best running back on his team. I don't think year. he was. I thought Eckler was more dynamic. Gordon came back, averaged less than four yards per carry, which you can get sure. into his career stats at some point later on on a future video. <laughs> it's not that different than what he's done before. A touchdown's kind of built him out for fantasy purposes, but Gordon, he didn't look right when he came back. I wonder if he's going to have to take a one-year prove-it deal I think and he then try and cash in again next offseason because he wanted to, t to get the bag. I think Gordon, in the end, unfortunately for him, kind of cost himself some money in the end. So we'll see where he ends up. I don't think L.A. is going to be where he stays, at least not with the Chargers.